Good morning. That was an odd situation just now. Did you all experience the ripple in the force? Suddenly it got just silent. And I hadn't asked for that yet. So I was kind of impressed. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> So good morning. Welcome to Potsdam United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Heidi Chamberlain. It has been a busy week, but in spite of all of that, I am still proud and privileged to be the pastor here in Potsdam. We have some announcements. Um, first of all, I wanted to let you know that our Hannah that sings in the choir, Sawulski, one of our choir members, who's also a student at Crean, will be giving a recital on Sunday, April 14th at 1.15 in the Snell Musical Theater. So I'm going to think I may cut a page or two out of the sermon so we get there. Is that okay? People, people are agreeing way too fast. I don't know. It will be a 30-minute recital at the Snell Hall. Uh, Lindsay Hebert will be joining her in a duet of sisters from the movie White Christmas, one of my all-time favorites. St. Lawrence Choral Society will present a concert along with uh, the Laurentian Singers on Friday, April 19th at 7 p.m. at Gunnison Chapel. Tom Ortmeyer and Debbie Nickery will be singing in this concert. Hello, we knew this. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to it. Um, let me look for my other announcements. We have a lot of announcements in the bulletin. I know that you can read them, but they are there. But I want to draw your attention to the first annual Babyless Baby Shower on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 12th. Uh, please consider donating to this event. There's a list of specific items requested by Renewal House for Young Moms in Need uh, it's on the mission table in the fellowship hall. Gifts may be dropped off at the church up to Mother's Day morning when all the items will be blessed during worship. The rest of the, uh, the big announcements include that the finance team will be meeting tomorrow, Monday, April 15th at 1.30 in the fellowship hall. Drum roll, please. We're working on it. We are, go as John Wesley would say, we are going on towards perfection, and obviously we've not arrived yet. And that's okay. Any other announcements or prayer concerns to be lifted? Begin this time of worship together this morning on this third Sunday of Easter, April 14th. Let's take time as the candles are lit to be in quiet contemplation and prayer. Use this moment to center ourselves. Um, I had the opportunity to, to be at the district gathering this week and, and be in conversation and in listening to the bishop who reminded us that centering with a breath prayer is just an amazing situation. If you breathe in, seven times in a row as you exhale slowly breathing out it helps to cleanse your body slow your chemistry quiet your heart and put you in a place where you are open for the divine and so please take a moment take a breath as the candles are lit the prelude is played and we listen to the choir's introit. <laughs>
Thank you, choir. This morning, as we begin this time of worship together, our call to worship and our words of assurance are in the bulletin. Sometimes good things are right in front of us and we don't see them. Our and our prejudices blind us. Open your eyes this day to see the goodness of the Lord. Open our hearts, gracious God, to receive your blessings. Continuing with our words of assurance, Lord of light and mercy, be with us this day as we again hear the stories of faith and sight. Help us to believe in your abiding presence with us, both in our darkness and in the light which you bring. Give us courage and strength to witness to your resurrection, for we offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. It's in our red hymnal. It's number 315. Please stand as you are able, whether in body or in spirit, and raise your voices in worship to God.
Thank you. Please be seated. We hear the word from Psalm 4, which you'll find in your red hymnal in the Psalter, page 741. The response is, there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You have given me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. The Lord hears when I call. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Be angry, but do not sin. Commune with your own hearts in your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. And then if you'll join your voice with mine in our prayer of illumination, which is also in your bulletin. Loving God, come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. There is indeed a time to praise God with song. And thank you, choir, for praising.
There is also a time to praise God with word. And we have two readings from the New Testament. Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 12, and 1 John chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power, our piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy One and the Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as you didn't, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had been foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. John chapter 3, 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all those who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there was no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And beloveds, I would ask you to just remain seated while we sing the first verse of um, Alleluia, Alleluia, number 162. Um. And now we hear from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning with verse 13. This is the recounting of the walk to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and walked with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What are you discussing with each, with each other while you walk along? And they stood still and looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? 
he asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to, the con to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were, that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It seems like it's been a little scripture heavy this morning. Well, I have a secret for you. I'm not done yet. Psalm 121 is an assurance of God's protection. It is a song of ascents. And it begins with the first verse and for eight more verses. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
My help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not stumble. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And I say to you in response to this news, my siblings in Christ, do you want to see? Now, as a child, I can barely remember that long ago, but yes, as a child, every Saturday morning as a kid, in my pajamas, I would race to the TV and turn it on. After the morning cartoons were the old black and white classics, The Little Rascals, Shirley Temple, and then The Three Stooges. And yes, I am indeed that old. I never forgot a scene from an episode of the Three Stooges, although I'll be honest, their slapstick comedy wasn't really my favorite. Curly cried out, Mo, Mo, I can't see. And Mo asked, what's the matter? And Curly replied, I've got my eyes closed. Nyah, nyah, nyah. I know, be impressed, I can do that all day long. But the truth is that God's handiwork is all around us. Everywhere from this coast and back again, all we have to do is look around, open our eyes, and we'll see someone very sovereign is in charge. Only the emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually blind of this world cannot see that our Lord is in control and will ultimately prevail. Our God is a mighty God. It is the God of Abraham. And we are still part of that fellowship through Jesus Christ, the Son. Brothers and sisters, do you want to see? The psalmist was being rhetorical when he asked, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? In truth, he already knew that God is in control. He quickly sang out, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And he concludes, the Lord will keep your life. The psalmist was saying that if God can create a world, then he can most assuredly conserve us here in that, now and thereafter. Are you down? I say to you, look around, and I'll ask you again, do you want to see? Truth be told, looking around doesn't always work that well. Unfortunately, there's always enough pain and suffering in this world to keep us down, to keep us occupied, to keep us distracted from our faith and from, from our time of worship and spiritual journey. There are intentional tragedies precipitated by horrible people. And then there are natural tragedies like fire and flood and earthquakes and disease with which we have to contend. Doesn't it seem like watching the evening news or listening to it online is just asking for our hearts to be troubled? Looking around doesn't always inspire us. Sometimes it feels like it gets us down to look around. Still, I ask again, do you want to see? Look around anyway. The only way to stay up is to look up. When the resurrected Jesus appeared to the disciples, their trust was completed as their potential for confident living and eternal life was assured. 
That's why Jesus said, look at my hands and look at my feet. Touch me and see. Getting in touch with Jesus, entering into holy communion with him through the spiritual disciplines of worship and prayer and fasting and study, sacrament, and indeed fellowship enables a person to live triumphantly amid the meanness, madness, and misery of life in this modern world. Once Larry King asked Chuck Colson how he had avoided the pitfalls of so many church leaders who can never live up to human expectations, and Colson replied simply, I tell people, don't follow me, follow Jesus. It's like we read, read in Hebrews, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So to put it another way, the only way to stay up is to look up to Jesus. Don't let pain and suffering cloud your sight. Do you want to see? Look up to Jesus. When we're getting down, we must remember the gospel, but we must first and foremost remember our Lord and Savior. We must remember how Jesus conquered death and assured the same for you and for me through faith. We must remember his resurrected greeting to the disciples, which is this experience of all who trust in him. He always begins with these words, peace be with you. My siblings in Christ, my beloved ones, do you want to see? The only way to stay up is to look up. I say to you, look up to Jesus' face. Amen? Amen. We'll find our hymn in the Black Hymnal, The Faith We Sing. It's number 2084, and it's Come, Let Us With Our Lord Arise. Please stand as you are able, whether in body or in spirit, and let us worship together. Please be seated. I, I know you've probably already closed your hymnal, but I love that Charles Wesley 
John's brother, would take traditional melodies and pin new words for the songs of the day. And so Anthony, I look to you to pick your favorite rapper and let's repurpose those, shall we? <laughs> hey, it's a thought. I am delighted each week when we come together and we share our joys and concerns before the service begins. And I especially love that we take moments to reflect on those needs and those joys that are before us. As we begin this time of prayer together, let us be mindful of the, the people and situations that were lifted for in concern, and also be mindful that we are constantly in prayer for those targeted by terrorists throughout the world those without homes, especially during bitter winter months, but it is not an easy road any time of the year. Those battling seasonal illness. We stay in prayer for our world leaders, community members, family and friends. And I am reminded anew after going to a district event that we lift Bishop Hector and the cabinet up always and ask that they make good and kind and merciful decisions on a conference level. We also lift all other unspoken or not yet named prayer requests into God's keeping. Let us pray. Lord of dawn and darkness, how grateful we are for your loving mercies. You saw our fear and doubt, our suspicion, our mistrust, and you banish them from our lives, replacing them with hope, peace, love, and joy. You called us to be your witnesses to all the world, unafraid of what others might think or say about us. We have been invited out of our darkened hideaways into the light of your world as emissaries of hope and justice, peace and compassion. Be with us as we participate in ministries of healing and hope through this church and in our community, region, nation, and world. Give us courage and strength to be your disciples in all the circumstances of our lives. But most especially, Holy One, be with us now as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, we come to the time in the service where we give our gifts and our tithes for the work of the church here in this community and ultimately in the world. We also, and I remind you each week, we also give of ourselves. And so we symbolically place those gifts and graces into this plate each week as well. Give with love, mercy, and kindness. Well, hello there, buddy. Are you holding the plate or is Jordan? Good job. Thank you.
Now, with those eyes, how could you not resist putting two envelopes in the plate? I tell you, well, all right, we'll work on that. Thank you so much, Ben and Jordan, for your help today. Let us pray and dedicate this offering. Help us to see beyond the many desires for things that can't begin to bring us the contentment that being genera generous disciples will pour into our lives. As we present these gifts to you, may our offerings of service and prayers, of witness and of wealth be pleasing to you and fill our lives with the joy that is like no other. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. As we continue our way through this Easter season, we will sing again this week as our final hymn, Because He Lives, the first verse, number 364. The words are in your bulletin. As we prepare to go forward to live the church in ministry to all the world, knowing that God calls us from this sacred place to go be in connection with others. Let's pray together the benediction that you'll find in your bulletin. May the light of God's face shine upon us. May the beauty of Christ's love shine through us. May the power of God's spirit flow within us. May we go forth as God's beloved children, revealing the risen Christ in all that we say and in all that we do. People of the road, rejoice for, for God is with you. Bring God's love and peace to all whom you meet. Go in peace now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you.